Here's what's new from the KSQM News Center. I'm Ed Evans. Agnew quadriplegic Ian Mackay completed the fifth day yesterday of his seven-day epic trek on his battery-powered wheelchair down the Pacific Coast between Oregon and California. Checking in with KSQM Radio last evening, Ian says it was one of the nicest riding days he's ever had. It started out on the side of Highway 101 for a couple of miles, crossing a big bridge, climbing up a bit of a hill, and then... Then we got into the Avenue of the Giants, and the next 34 miles were nothing but, uh, but just cruising through these really big trees on a quiet road, and we, we really couldn't have asked for more. I mean, the, the traffic was light, and there was, I mean, breathtaking beauty all around us that, uh, I mean, it actually slowed us down a bit because we couldn't help but stopping and taking pictures often, and uh, it, was, it was just the kind of day where we, we really wanted to stop and smell the roses, and we needed it. But, uh, but it was a heck of a day. In all 39 miles yesterday while celebrating his 39th birthday, Ian's journey started out Sunday in Brookings, Oregon. It'll end up 272 miles later this Sunday in Fort Bragg, California. It's his third major long-distance ride on his wheelchair to promote efforts to draw attention to the need to provide accessibility for all persons and to continue with his love for the out-of-doors. That's it. That's the news for Friday, October 9th, 2020. For KSQM News, I'm Ed Evans. You're tuned to KSQM 91.5 Squim. It's 6 o'clock here on KSQM, and this is Scotty Ducati. This programming is made possible through the support of Nuts About Hi-Fi. Well, I'll be taking you up to the 8.30 hour and Dr. D's Roots of Rock, so stay tuned. First off, I want to thank the unknown DJ. He's always got a theme. This theme, I don't know, the dentist. Um, you know, I went to the dentist yesterday. It's never, never a lot of fun to go to the dentist. So he was trying to somehow combine music and dentist anyway. Well, if you like KSQM FM, a major reason, perhaps the reason you listen is that it helps you escape from whatever occupies your mind the rest of the week. Because you certainly don't want the issues of the day encroaching on your enjoyment. I hope all of you find ways to escape <laughs> our exhausting political times, as well as our exhausting pandemic, as well as our all-consuming digital technologies, and enjoy yourselves by listening to KSQM. Because we have music, not mayhem. We've got a great musical lineup tonight, so Happy Friday evening to you. Kick back, relax, fix yourself a quality beverage, and enjoy the best music ever made. Well, I know some of our listeners are wondering what has happened to Ian Mackay, who has uh, been going on another epic ride in his electric wheelchair, and, and normally he calls in at the end of each day around 5.30 to keep us updated. What we're hearing is that he's in an area where the cell phone coverage is um, good. So stay tuned. You know, once he gets into an area where he's got some good cell coverage, um, we will uh, get his report for the day. So stay tuned. Not to worry. You're tuned to 91.5 KSQM Squim. All right, it's 30 minutes past six here on KSQM, and this is Scotty Ducati. You were just listening to The Fifth Dimension. The name of the song was The Girl Song, and before that we heard Los Indios Tabajaras with Over the Rainbow. Well, I am very pleased to say that we have Ian Mackay on the line. Ian, very nice to meet you. I've, I've uh, read a lot about you in our community service announcements here, and um, it's just exciting to hear about your great adventures here. So looking well, forward to looking forward to, to hearing about it and, and hearing about it firsthand. This is the first time, you know, during during my program that I've, I've had this opportunity. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, Scotty. And it's, uh, it's good to meet you, at least over, over the line like this. And, yeah, looking forward to telling you a little bit about the day. Excellent. All right. Well, yes. Uh, again, my name is Ian McKay. I'm out doing these maybe 35 and 45 mile rides 
uh, every day to get from Brookings, Oregon, down to uh, to Fort Bragg. And today we did uh, well. Today we were supposed to do 38 miles between um, was it Redway? I guess there's a town right outside of Garberville mm. uh, to even a smaller town called Hales Grove, which is on the Highway One, um, and uh, it's probably about 34 miles, 35 miles north of Fort Bragg. Uh, and uh, but today was a, it was a bit of a hairy day. I mean, we um, we got to start off with a a few small hills with uh, with light traffic before we were forced onto the 101. And uh, you know, the 101, the rumble strips were plentiful. And there's those side slopes that are on the side of, uh, side of the shoulder. And that gets really tricky to drive your wheelchair through. And I'm doing it all with my mouth. I, I, I drive my chair with what's called a sip and puff. Mm-hmm. It's just a straw that I'm at my lips. And uh, you know, my, I can turn it by puffing or sipping lightly. To go to go right or left. Anyway, when I'm on those uh, those side slopes, they really kind of force me to want to go up a slope all the time, and, and that's no fun. But really, the uh, the challenge today was was going through one section of the 101 that uh, was about three and a half miles through, where there is no shoulder, and the logging trucks are coming really quick, and there's some really sharp turns, and even cyclists, it's not a not a great spot for, for cyclists to go through. But when you're talking about uh, a power wheelchair that's you know about 26 inches wide, uh, even if I'm right up on that line, I'm I'm still out in traffic about about 16, 18 inches, and and it was just there. I mean, most of the time I'm fine on the shoulder, but this was a short stretch, and we knew it was coming. And uh, you know the guys all had their their vests on, and we had the noodle you know sticking out to really try to block traffic. And everyone is really just waving their arms. Mm-hmm. Luckily, it's it's not busy enough where uh, there's you know there's usually big gaps in the opposite direction of traffic, so so people can pass me regularly, and and we pull off if there's you know, we're actually holding up cars. But it, it was scary, and it, it, it's uh, it's not what we want to be doing out here. It, it, it's a little beyond demonstrating accessibility. It's it's more. Just, just trying to get through it. Um, but shortly after that, we did get to get off the highway and go for about seven miles along a nice isolated road, and, and that was awesome until we came up to some some dirt segments that that I have never seen a worse dirt road, and it was uh, kind of just closed on, or it was only a one way, so you could see the other end, and people would be stopped, and and they'd let one car go through and then another, but. Uh, yeah, we had to had to get through that. One of the bikes got a flat tire while going through it. Of course, it was Jimmy, because Jimmy's always the, the the one getting flat tires. So yeah, at least we're under one a day. But then, you know, after that, we were a little nervous about doing that last stretch, and we knew there was another stretch that was coming up that was uh, pretty much identical in in difficulty and and technical riding, and. I had to make a decision, and we got up to it, and it was about six and a half miles, and, uh, you know, maybe when I was in my 38, 38th, I would have made a different decision, but I decided to put the guys in the van, and we drove for about six and a half miles, and it was the first time that I'd ever, I'd ever done that on a means ride, is, yeah. is actually skip a section, but, but it wasn't safe, and, uh, and a decision had to be made, and I didn't need the guys out there risking themselves unnecessarily and uh, and yeah and so so we did we had to skip skip a little section it was uh it was all it was a little emotional for all of us like god we can't believe we're doing this but we really have to do it it, it just it was it was the right thing to do and so instead we we drove up and uh right about where that section ended was a uh, a large tree to drive through the chandelier tree and so we, we paid the $10, and we drove the van to the parking lot. We all got out, and I rode my wheelchair, and they rode their bikes, and we all rode side by side through the tree. And then we just left from there and, uh, and continued the final leg of the day, which was also really fun because we finally got onto the Highway 1. Mm-hmm. And Highway 1, um, it's, uh, first of all, the surface was beautiful, really smooth. Um, fairly narrow shoulders, but just no traffic. I mean, no cars are going through that section. 
so we uh, were able to take most of the road, usually riding side by side with plenty of time to hear the cars coming from the behind, and, and we could easily flag them down, and they'd see us and be able to go around us. It is, it's, a, it's a lovely space, and we're going to be on that pretty much the entire day tomorrow. Um, but yeah, uh, we actually got to kind of see what we'll be doing tomorrow, because we are, are spending the night tonight in Fort Bragg, and we had to ride to our hotel in the, in the van from our stopping spot. And there isn't much shoulder, but uh, but we're we're grateful that there's so little. It's a little traveled route, and the views. Oh man, once you get onto the coast and you're just looking out at the Pacific and just these rocky coasts, it's it's incredible. And I I can't wait to just slow it down and and see it at seven miles per hour. Too bad we had I think 4,400 feet of climb in for the whole day. Wow. Um, and a lot of that was just kind of like four or five hundred foot climbs. We repeated probably five or six, four or five times, but um, the final, the final one did. Uh, I don't know, maybe like fifteen hundred feet or something. It's, it's called the Leggett Hill, mm. and many cyclists you'll hear talk about it. That it's, uh, you know, it's a difficult, a difficult climb. We didn't find it that bad. I mean, my uh, the two guys that are with me at that point, Jimmy and Josh, they are uh, strong riders and had no problem. And I had plenty of battery, and so. We just trucked on up it, and it was a it was a good time. Well, the scenery can be just absolutely spectacular. I've, oh, I've, I've with my buddies and I, we did a f- you know a few years back. Uh, we did our motorcycles, oh. you know, along along Highway One there, and it's just it's incredible. But but I can imagine, you know, being in a wheelchair, that you know, y- you know, there's there's some pretty there's some twisties in there, some serious twisties, yeah. and uh, blind corners and and pretty steep, you know steep areas yeah. where where you know the the recreational vehicles are trying to go around these these corners you know mm-hmm. and they're they're like bottoming out and scraping you know it's just it's it's really pretty tricky yeah. stuff but beautiful scenery i mean it the california coast is just spectacular and i i'm really really happy for you ian that you are doing this and and uh, you know getting out there and and gosh i mean I, you know, being able to see it at seven miles an hour, is, you know, you're really seeing it. Yeah, there's it's no just... doubt about it. And it's something I've always wanted to experience. I always wanted to do it on a bike, and unfortunately I didn't get that opportunity. I broke my tech first, and, uh, you know, it, it's just cool that we're finding a way to have that experience um, in a way that uh, is going to be non-traditional, but at least we're out there doing it. It's and inspirational. I, I got to say about the, 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 the beauty, I mean, we were coming from you know, the Redwoods, and then as we climbed up, getting into these oak, these oak woodlands, and, and then starting to see just some pines, some, some coastal pines, and, uh, and then coming down that hill. Yeah, when that, when that Pacific comes into view, I mean, it, it does take your breath away. Hey, Ian, how was the weather today? It wasn't too bad. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty bundled up still, but, uh-huh. uh, but it, was, it was sunshine. I think we saw, we saw a number of hours in the 70s. Good. Which, oh, which good. Was, which was awesome. Yeah, and lots of blue skies and and sunshine. Um, but you know, I, I and I, I probably would have even got a little hot or, or burnt. But I've got my really cool canopy, which <laughs> brings me to uh, the sponsor of the day, which is Deesco Manufacturing, and that's D I E S T C O, and they're out of Chico, California. And what's really neat about this company is they make a product for wheelchair users and scooter users and the products they make really are all about getting outside there are things like these weather chaps that go over your legs that uh, prevent rain from getting onto your lap or or feet if you've got your canopy on and they make the canopy um, they make these side um, plastic things for my my canopy so i even can block the rain from the sides anyway i just love that uh that there are companies out there that that are really helping people get outside. And uh, it was a real honor that, that they chose to support me this year. And, um, and we love the owner there, Dan Diestel. So, so yeah, and, and big shout out to Diestco. Diestco, and that's D-I-E-S-T-C-O Manufacturing. You got it. Okay, got do they, it. Are, are they on your website or your blog? They are. They're, okay, all, they're, they're, a, they're a partner, and they're on their partner's page in the website with a link. And on our social media today, we have been... Uh, 
We have been shouting their praise every chance we got. <laughs> Very good. Okay, and the website uh, is iansride.com. That's I-A-N-S-R-I-D-E dot com. Okay, very good. There's a purpose in your doing this. Maybe you could tell our Definitely. listeners. Definitely. Well, I mean, there's probably three reasons that, mm -hmm. why I do this. And um, the first reason is this is what I love to do. Uh, I'm getting outside and I'm exploring places that uh, I, I haven't explored before. And I'm doing it with the people I love and, and, and my really close friends. And, and so that that's really important. Um, another thing, uh, another reason I'm doing this is it to demonstrate that it can be done. And that uh, you know, people don't need to let their physical um, limit, you know, physical ability limit what, what, what they pursue, the, the passions they pursue. And uh, like I said, this is something I love and definitely want to show that it can be done. The third, it is to advocate for more accessible outdoors. And uh, that can be done in, in a variety of ways. I mean, I'm, I'm doing something a little extreme and I'm not... Uh, advocating for wheel chasers that go take the Pacific Coast bike route uh, all the way down California. Um, but I, 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 want, uh, I want when we design infrastructure us to consider all abilities and all users. And uh, I think that we do need more bike paths throughout our nation and, and we need to design our infrastructure outside just the, the use of the motor vehicle. So yeah, I mean, those are the, the main three reasons why I, I do what I do out here and um, you know back at home we do a lot of other little things uh, just to, to help with local parks or um, local projects. I do a lot of consulting with just new out businesses that have outdoor spaces and, and how that we can make those uh, the most accessible for people that, uh, that are using a wheelchair. Very good, Ian. And by the way, if you're just joining us, we have Ian Mackay on the peg here at uh, KSQM 91.5 on day uh, day six of Ian's ride. What's the weather forecast for you, uh, Ian? What's going to go? Oh. <laughs> well, tomorrow uh, we might expect a little rain. A little now, rain. Now, okay. I, don't, I don't think that we're going to see more than a tenth uh, of an inch, so we're, we're not going to get much. And uh, it's likely, it's just possible we won't get any. But we are prepared for, um, you know, a little, a little downpour, and uh, and hopefully it's light. Okay, and so the target for tomorrow is it's Fort Bragg, yeah. California. Okay. They have a brewery here that has nice outdoor seating, and we're thinking about uh, maybe finishing there and and and, call, and rolling right up, rolling right up, and uh, you know, it's <laughs> almost going to be like. <laughs> The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. There you here. go. I like we'll that. Get, yeah. We'll get well, to enjoy a cold one at the end of the You deserve a quality beverage. A quality <laughs> beverage, yes. Oh, that sounds so good. It's making my mouth water. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That's great. What are, the, what are the specific challenges with wet weather? Uh, anything that in particular you have to be most careful of? Well, there's definitely two uh, big things. And, and uh, you know, with, with weather comes uh, lower visibility. No. So, so we definitely need to make sure that we are uh, we are seen out there, mm -hmm. and we will have a little larger group. I think we're gonna have four cyclists with us for our whole cycling team, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they're gonna be spread out pretty far because you know, we do want to give uh, motorists an advance notice that I'm up there, and so that's that's definitely a challenge. But another big challenge is is just uh, me regulating my temperature. Um, you know, being a high level quadriplegic, I I can't sweat or you know, if I'm hot or I can't shiver if I'm too cold. And uh, that means that, I'm, you know, I'm kind of like a reptile where I'm just going to uh, become whatever the, my, my environment is. Mm -hmm. And so we, we do require a lot, of, uh, a lot of clothing and a lot of layers. And, you know, if, I, if at lunchtime I'm a little chilly, then I'm going to end up getting in the van and cranking that heater up and, and getting a good half an hour or so to, to, to warm up. So yeah, those are the biggest concerns, visibility and me managing my temperature. Just just a question, um, Ian, about like, for example, your the tires on your on yeah. your wheelchair. Yeah. Um, how, you know, do you have special tires that that are, you know, better in the rain? Or I don't, all, all but weather? What I've got, uh, I mean, they, they, they do handle really well in the rain. I have not missed a day outside on the trail since Halloween 2016, and I live in Port Angeles, so I'm, you know, I'm getting rain all the time. 
<laughs> and they, they handle pretty, pretty darn well. But what I did do is I changed my tires just before I came. So I've got brand new tread and, uh, and they're, they're going to do really well. And I won't have any problems with, with flipping around. And especially I, I've got enough weight. I mean, I'm 570 pounds with me in this wheelchair and uh, it's it's very stable it doesn't slide much so so that shouldn't be an issue you told me one time that you estimated the mileage that you had put on that uh, that chair so this this chair um is now over fifteen thousand miles Can i'd have to that? look at the exact numbers but wow. but but yeah it's, it's a lot i mean i i, I average i think maybe like 25 and 2800 miles a year and some years it's up closer to 4,500, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I spent a lot of miles on it, and yeah, that's what I love to do, and I, I love that wheelchair companies, uh, particularly Invacare, the one that, that, that makes my chair, uh, creates equipment that allows me to live the lifestyle that I want and of my choosing. Good so, yeah. So what's yeah. for dinner tonight? You know, I have been asking the same question. We just got to our hotel, and I hopped on the line with you guys. And uh -huh. We're still, uh, we're still. Maybe that decision's been made without me. Uh, what did you have last um, night? I, I just live vicariously through this. Oh, what did we? Uh, <laughs> oh, you know, well, last night was my was my birthday. That's right. That's right. And uh, and somehow I lucked out, and we got a ribeye to go. Because <laughs> so I had steak and uh, garlic mash is what I had last night. Very good, very good. Okay, well, again, if you're just joining us, it's Ian's Ride 2020. By the end of tomorrow, you will put on about 270 miles then. And it's a costly endeavor, and I want to encourage our listeners again to go to your website, iansride.com. That's I-A-N-S-R-I-D-E dot com. And folks could make a, a donation there, couldn't they? Yeah, they can, and that, that's definitely um, a challenge with this. It's it, it's important, I think, what we do, and I think that a lot of people really enjoy, uh, um, you know, seeing seeing it done from from home. And um, but for for me to get my my cyclist 272 miles, I also have to feed them and I have to yeah, right. lodge them. And, and so yes, we we do have expenses, and any donations are uh, are welcome and very appreciated. And you can also just to support Ian's ride is is just you know go out go outside and. Advocate for the outdoors whenever you can, and, and just soak it up, especially on the Olympic Peninsula. It's so beautiful there. Wow. Well, thank you so much. And KSQM is very honored to to have you on the air each night and to uh, hear the stories. It's a great story. Well, thank you guys, and I look forward to uh, to telling you the final the final leg of the of the adventure tomorrow. Outstanding. Thank you, Ian. All right. Thanks so much, Ian. All right, guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Bye bye. Very good. Bye. Have a good evening. Wow. That was impressive, Jeff. That that really was. Um, you know, listening to Ian, he sounds he sounds really very positive and upbeat, and um, what an adventure! And it's such an inspiration. And, and, yeah. and there's a man who gets up every day and uh, takes a look at the wow you know, the day, yeah. and then attacks the day and and, and does uh, does this stuff. And I guess the major point is we're very fortunate to to be here on this planet, and there's lots of stuff to see. It's just beautiful. Go on out. You know, we've, we've been sent to our room for the last six months, basically, you know, yeah. with this COVID-19. Good time. Good time to just to kind go of go outside. Go outside. Even though it's fall, it might be a little cold, yeah. but walk around, and see it, things. The air know. quality is good now. And now I mean, it's, it's good. It's really it's good. good. Yeah. 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 Very good. All right. Thank, thank you, Jeff. Thank you for introducing me to Ian. That's That was great. And uh, tune in again tomorrow evening around 530. Yeah. <laughs> around, we you know, approximately correct. Yeah. Uh, we'll see, uh, you know, how, how Ian... Uh, Progresses tomorrow. All right. In in uh, honor of Ian Mackay by Craig Chakiko, the drifter.